to fight for the right and to build a nation's might and the army goes rolling along proud of all we have done and we'll fight until the battle's won and the army goes rolling along then it's hi hi hey the army's on its way count off your cadence loud and strong for where we go you will always know when the army goes rolling along yeah hey well it's uh june 14th flag day or the army's birthday and uh yeah i i served i'm proud anyway it's uh this is for the prediction fight for the june 25th uh wbc lightweight title fight between humberto soto and motoki sasaki and first I'll break down both fighters, and then I'll give my prediction. We'll start out with Humberto Soto, who's 55-7-2, 32 knockouts. Um, he's kind of kind of big for a, a lightweight. I mean, he's 5'7", so, and he's moving up in weight. So when you're looking at that, you know, his last six fights have been at um, lightweight, and it's the natural progression. As you get older, you tend to put on more pounds of muscle and things of that nature, and you weigh more. So him moving up is is not something that's uh, totally unheard of. The only thing kind of concerning is that he hasn't had any knockouts since he's moved up to the new weight. Now, he also became a bit more of a technical fighter. So he's boxing a lot more and, you know, doing his thing. And a lot of times you don't get the knockouts. But when you're fighting guys like Antillion, you know, it's kind of hard to get those knockouts. You, you feel me? Um, now, he had four KOs in his last five before he moved up in weight. So... It's not like the powder's not there. He's very good wins over Diaz, over Antillion, who's dirty, and <laughs> Munoz. And in the Antillion fight, if you're watching that, you think, oh, he should get a rematch. And then you're like, wait a second, he's fighting Brandon Rios. But he was so dirty in that fight. I mean, the low blows and stuff. I mean, honestly, if the ref was remotely paying attention to the fight, you know, he could have been disqualified well before the fight ended. Uh, he's a very... Now, get back to Soto. He's a very accurate fighter. Very um, razor with his punches. He boxes. He pumps that jab. He throws the combos. Hammers the uppercuts. You know, in the hooks, in the right hands. And works that body very, very well. Kind of throws what you would call almost like a Floyd Mayweather type of hook. Um, jab to the body. Gets you right in the solar plexus. It's a nasty shot. Um, he can bang, but it's not his choice. He is a Mexican warrior, so... You know, he, he can do it. He's got no problem doing that. Very good hand speed. Uh, he has very nice counters. And he keeps... He has a very good chin. <laughs> he can give absolutely every bit as much as he can take. And he keeps his cool. He doesn't fold under pressure. The Antillian fight, if you watch that, it's amazing how well he kept his composure in that fight with all that was happening to him. He is a very, very good all-around fighter. There's nothing he can't do in that ring so when you see that you know you're, you're like wow you know, he's watches fights you know they're very exciting they're very very good fights over to Mataki Sasaki who's 36 8 and 1 23 knockouts um, he's uh, older he's at 35 instead of 31 for Soto and he's actually dropping two weight classes down naturally he's fought at welterweight for forever Sinchenko he fought Sinchenko got beat up very well in that one <laughs> Um, fought most of his career at, at that. And this is pretty much like the opposite of what you normally do. But at five foot seven, which is, as I said, kind of tall for lightweight, it's not very big for a welterweight. And that shows. Uh, he's been knocked out three times, but the last one was eight years ago. Uh, but he's very dirty. And what I mean by that is he leads with his head. He lunges in and winds up cracking you a lot with that look in the Sinchenko fight because that's pretty much the only one you're going to pull up on the tube anyway and check that out, he's fast, he's aggressive but he's not an active fighter a lot of feints a lot of lunges a lot of uh, pushing with his punches on a lot of those he does throw with bad intentions but most of them are looping looping shots, uh, left hook to the body overhand right to the head and if you're if you just go like this, you know, one hand up, one hand down. That's pretty much his entire, you know, a lot of his stuff. 
Occasionally he throws a jab, but again, that's more of a lunge and a push with that. Uh, ducks his head when he's throwing or being uh, thrown at. So he's very open to the uppercut. And if you've watched any of Soto's, you know he's more than willing to throw an uppercut every now and then. Uh, has a high D, but he drops his left every time he throws. When he pops it out, boom, you watch it, and then he just drops, drops off the map, you know. And he can he's not big on countering. He does work the body. And overall, he is a solid fighter. But he's not elite. And in this one, believe it or not, even though Sinchenko didn't knock him out, I think Soto is. Just by as razor sharp as Soto is, as much as he will hit Sasaki, and as good as Soto can fight inside, Sasaki's just open to so much stuff that unless Sasaki winds up getting himself disqualified for low blows and headbutts, I think Soto's going to get him out of there. It's just weird. I, I don't know why. I would think that, but I do. Okay? Well, hey, that's my prediction for the June 20th fight. Uh, please comment, rate, subscribe. Be my friend. And uh, keep marching along, all right? Whoa!